when I went to purchase a home, I really didn't understand the process. I didn't feel like it was explained to me. So in today's video, I'm going to go through step-by-step -step how to purchase a home, home what the home buying process looks like out here in Phoenix. Oh, let's jump in. want to do if you want to purchase a home out here in Phoenix or anywhere really is you want to know what can you spend. You can't just run out and start looking at 500, 600, 700 thousand dollar homes if you have never met with a lender or if you don't have 700 thousand dollars in cash in your bank account. Okay, the beginning of my career made the mistake of showing homes to people that weren't pre-approved and they fell in love with homes that they just couldn't afford. And it was very, it was very sad. It was very traumatic, right? So you definitely want to meet with multiple lenders and get multiple quotes on what it will cost you to purchase a home. Okay. You don't have to use the bank that you bank with. Let's say you bank with Wells Fargo or Bank of America or Chase. No, you do not have to use them. You can get a private lender or a broker and they can shop around different rates for you. Not all lenders, just like not all realtors, just like any industry, we're not all created equal, right? So make sure you're comfortable, you have a good repertoire and that you get along with them. Make sure they're explaining the process to you. Break down your taxes, your insurance. If you're not putting 20% down, you're going to have private mortgage insurance. And, you know, are you doing a VA loan, an FHA loan, a conventional loan? So all of these different things are going to affect what you can purchase when you're looking to purchase a home. So if you're not sure where to start finding a lender, reach out to me. I can connect you with a couple that I work with and um, you can start from there. So that is step number one. By the way, you guys, I am Andrea Sheppy, a Phoenix native, 41 year and a full-time realtor out here in Phoenix, Arizona. It would love to help you with your home buying or selling or relocation process. So definitely reach out to me. I'm on social media, yada, 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 all that good stuff. If it's your first time to my channel, please like, and subscribe. If you find these videos useful, I really appreciate it. And it really helps the channel out. So let's dive uh, back into step number. Okay. Two. You guys, step number two, when purchasing a property out here in Phoenix Metro, is find yourself a real estate agent. Now, there is a difference between a realtor and a real estate agent. Um, a realtor abides by the code of ethics. We promise to look out for your best interest and to make sure that we are meeting all of the ethic criteria to get you into a home. Now, a real estate agent doesn't have to abide by the code of ethics, but it doesn't mean that they don't. Really, the, what you're going to want to do when you're looking for an agent is Look for a realtor that is full-time. Nothing wrong with part-time agents. I did part-time for quite a while when I had my retail stores, another career. However, I couldn't quite give my full focus to my clients. And that is why I eventually went into being a full-time realtor, right? Because I now I do this every day, day in, day out. I, I breathe it, I live it, I sleep it. And that is my main focus. And it is the main thing I educate myself on, right? Also, I would Google them. Um, you know, are they on social media? Do they understand marketing? Are they, you know, do they understand what's happening in the market? Okay, so you're going to want to ask them for reports on the areas you're looking in. Um, demographics, cost of living, average home price. Um, you know, what are some of the different quirks to this area? Like I said in some other videos, is there a zero lot line? Is it a really high HOA? Is it a land lease? Is it unincorporated? So, so many things you want to make sure you're asking your agent when they are coming to represent you. Get a buyer presentation. Look at their, um, their buyer book and just find out their knowledge right? If you don't feel comfortable and you don't feel like you have a good connection, that it may not be the person for you. Just like I'm not for everyone, but I am for some people, right? Um, not everyone is going to gel together. And that is the beautiful thing about being human, right? Is that we're all different and we all have like different vibes and different energy. So make sure you really connect with the person that is helping you find a home because that is so important. That way you feel comfortable asking questions and um, you really feel like they have your best interest in mind. So those are some tips uh, on number two for finding a real estate agent or a realtor. Okay, you guys, step number three when purchasing a home out here in Phoenix, Arizona is 
make a list of your wants and your must haves. Okay. So there are things that maybe you absolutely can't live without. Maybe you absolutely have to have a garage, no carpool. And maybe you would like a pool, but you don't have to have a pool. So it's like, nah, you don't have to put a pool in my search, but if we find one, that would be a bonus. Or, hey, a two bedroom with a loft would be okay, but a three bedroom would be ideal. Or, no, it has to be a four bedroom. I have two children and a husband, and I need an, a home office and I want a home gym. So, really make that list of things that are going to make or break when you're looking for a home and just know that it's probably going to change. And along with making a list, you guys, you're going to want to research areas, okay? Drive different neighborhoods during the day, drive them at night, have lunch there, Google them and make sure that you're working with someone that knows the area very well and they can give you all the insights on what it's like to live, work, and play there. And just make sure you understand what the community vibe is like. Uh, what, what's the schooling like? What are the parks like? Is there community events there? Is um, What are the taxes? Because all of our cities have different taxes too, along with obviously our, our county and state tax. So Definitely little things like that you're going to want to look into and because those will make all the difference in understanding the neighborhood. Don't forget the location as well to your work and to your family, friends, things like that too. Whatever's important to you, you want to lay it all out, put it on a page. And I have sheets for you to make these things. Um, if you want, just uh, go to my, my link tree and you can get all my free buyer and seller guides. But anyhow, that is something very important. Make a list of your must-haves. Okay, so the next step, we found a home, right? You love it and you feel like this is the home. So now we want to make an offer, okay? So when you're making an offer, your agent, your realtor, your real estate agent, whoever you choose, make sure they let you know the type of market you're in. Are you in a buyer's market? Are you in a seller's market? Are you in a balanced market? Okay. Um, is there multiple offers on the property? Your agent should be calling the listing agent, chatting with them, getting info. Why is the seller you know, moving? What's their motivation? Is there something besides price that would make this fall into place? You know, what is it that the seller desires that's going to give you the buyer the edge to purchase? purchase the home. Okay. And you know, maybe you need concessions. So is the seller open to concessions? Do you need to buy down your rate? Maybe you come in over the price, ask for concessions back. The seller's still getting their max price. You get to buy down your interest rate, right? So these are all the things that you got to think about when making an offer. I was in a multiple offer situation just this summer and we won and we didn't even have the highest price. Okay. But we negotiated in some things that were really important to my buyers, but not as important to the seller. There are different things that are going to motivate sellers and motivate you, the buyer. Um, you know, when you get really high end, sometimes they leave the Ferrari in the garage, things like that. Those are the things you're going to want to think about when making an offer, really negotiate and think outside the box and make sure your agent has all of these different negotiating and savvy skills to get you the best offer in order to get you the home of your dreams. Okay, next step. Hey, you guys, so once you get under contract, the first thing you're going to do with your title company, by the way, the title company can be chosen by you, the buyer, and what you're going to do is put down what they call an earnest deposit. Now, an earnest deposit is what we consider good faith money. Basically, it's usually about 1% of the home of the home price. So let's say it's $500,000 you're probably going to be putting down like a $5,000 earnest deposit. Now, not always, and there is no right or wrong, right? You can do whatever you want to do. It'll come back to you at closing and it'll go towards um, your closing costs, right? If for whatever reason you do something outside the scope of the contract, you as a buyer can lose your earnest money, okay? So very important that your realtor is very educated on the contract because yes, you can lose your money. If you go under contract and you haven't locked a rate, but let's say they were at six and a half percent, you're like, yeah, I can easily afford this home at six and a half. And by the time you get to the closing table, rates are at 8% and you no longer can make the payment at that new interest rate. That is not an out in the contract, you guys. You're going to lose your earnest deposit because that is not a stipulation that you're allowed to back out. So you have to know the contract inside and out find a realtor that is very educated so you don't lose your money. Very important, but earnest deposit is basically good faith money that just shows the seller you're very serious.
All right, you guys, next step, home inspection. So home inspection, so important. By default, it's 10 days in our contract. You can shorten it if you're looking to make your offer a little bit more appealing, maybe a multiple offer situation. But with a home inspection, you do pay that upfront at the time of service. And that's usually a couple hundred dollars, depending on your home. Home inspector goes around and they look at all the major components, right? The roof, the AC unit, the foundation. Um, you, you should add on a termite inspection to that. If you have a pool, you should do a pool inspection. They're going to test your electrical outlets. They're going to make sure everything is to code. Now, after that, you're going to get the longest report you've ever seen and it's going to tell you basically everything that's wrong with the home. Okay. Don't freak out. Everyone freaks out. The inspector is meant to find everything that's wrong. Okay. And what you want to do here now is you're going to negotiate with the seller things that you can get fixed and or get a credit to repair those things yourself. Now, I always suggest getting a credit because that way you get to choose who fixes the items versus the seller fixing it because you don't always know the quality of work, though they do have to supply receipts at the end. You do get to reinspect at the end to make sure it meets your standards. I always add in extra time. It defaults to three days in the contract. I usually go at least five before close of escrow to get those receipts. But anyhow, going into too much detail, home inspection, very necessary. And after the home inspection, if needed, you will bring out an AC contractor, a roof contractor, a, you know, a pool contractor, they specialize in that. They will let you know how much it might cost to fix the roof or to, you know, fix the AC, get it up and running. And then you'll get quotes for those. And we turn all of this great stuff into the seller in order to make the best case scenario for you as the buyer. And you want the seller to understand where you're coming from. So that is the home inspection. And that is the next step. Okay. You guys, the next step in the home buying process out here in Phoenix, Arizona is the appraisal. Now, the appraisal can definitely make or break a transaction. And if you're on the buying side and you're in a competitive home that you're looking to purchase, some people will waive the appraisal. And what that means is no matter what it appraises at, you are offering to bring cash in to make up the dip. I don't ever suggest doing an appraisal waiver if your realtor suggests it to you, just make sure you fully understand what you're getting into, especially in this volatile market. Now, if it's a home you're absolutely dying for and you've been looking and looking for years, then it might be something you want to consider. Okay. The appraisal is also something that you will pay at the time of service. So you're going to pay out of pocket. Same thing. It's going to depend on the size of your home from a couple hundred dollars to the higher end of you know, $700, $800. It is done from a third party company. The appraiser goes to the home and they give a opinion of value. So important to remember that an appraisal is considered, like I just said, an opinion of value. You could have two appraisers doing the exact same home on the exact same day, and they will come up with two different prices. Now, I actually spent a year in an appraisal program for CoreLogic, which is one of the biggest data set companies in the world. And I went through about 90 to 100 hours of appraisal training and really interesting stuff, definitely different than how realtors run their CMAs or their comps for homes. So make sure your agent understands the appraisal process, not only when you're purchasing a home, but when you're selling a home too, because you really want to make sure that it is a price that is going to meet the demands of the market, but not be too much and, you know, fall out of contract. So if it appraises at price or more, then the selling side is never going to know. And now let's say you went under contract at 525, the appraisal came back at 540, which isn't really happening right now, just FYI, but it has happened multiple times in the past. Now you have instant equity in your home. So you paid 525, you move in and your home is worth 540, right? So very, very exciting if your appraisal comes in above value. What appraisers do is they take the home you're buying and they find the most like home within usually a mile or less. They don't like to cross major freeways. They won't do a two-story versus a one-story. They're not going to do a five-bedroom to a three-bedroom and then adjust for the number of bedrooms unless you're in some really you know far out market where there's just no options for them to look at. An appraiser is going to find the most similar home. Realtors tend to find the nicest home and then adjust the subject property, which is the home you're buying, and try to make it fit that higher price. That is the appraisal process. Now, 
let's say you are under contract at 500 and the appraisal comes in at 480 and there's no appraisal waiver. And now you and the seller have to decide what are you going to do? Okay. So now this will depend on your loan as well. There's different requirements for different loans, but let's just say you're in a basic conventional loan and it comes in below contract price. Well, the seller can either agree to drop down to the contract price. That way the bank will still give you the loan. You can agree to bring cash to the closing table, come up to that 500. You can meet in the middle. Maybe the seller comes down 10,000, you bring in 10,000. It really just depends on the situation, how bad you want the home, how bad the seller wants to get rid of the home and what the market was like when you purchased the home, right? Was there multiple offers and the seller knows someone's waiting in the wings to buy it if you drop drop out, well, then they may not drop the price to meet you. They may not be negotiable on that. So those are all the things you have to consider when you're under contract and the appraisal is kind of your last step to get towards that closing. Okay. Now let's say you decide not to bring in the cash and the seller decides not to drop the price. Then you fall out of contract and seller starts over you as the buyer start over. You do get your earnest deposit back, which again is that money, that good faith money that you put down in the very beginning. You do not though get your appraisal money back or your inspection money back because you paid for a service to be done. And so they did the service. They're kind of a separate third party. So it doesn't really matter um, that you didn't get the home because they still gave you a service. So that is the appraisal. And there's so many other things that could happen, but that could be an hour long video. So just know, make sure your realtor, your real estate agent, whoever you choose to use, make sure they understand the process, especially with the different loan types. You want to make sure they are on the par with that so that you are getting the best possible deal for the home. Okay, you guys. So one of the final steps now is getting all of your ducks in a row, getting all of the, the last minute things from the underwriter who will be on your loan. You know, a lot of times they're going to find little last minute things that you need to clear. Where did that $500 deposit come from to, you know, make sure you still have your job, all of those things. And once all of that is good and clear, you're going to get a clear to close. You're going to get your closing disclosure and your lender will go over all of your payments, what it includes, your taxes, your HOA, on and on and on. And now you are ready, met all the requirements from the lender. We've gotten through the inspection. We've gotten through the appraisal. We've gotten through negotiating of getting things fixed or getting a credit. And it's almost time. Now we're going to do a final walkthrough. We're going to make sure the home is in substantially the same condition as when we first saw it. So now people, you know, if it's an occupied home, they're going to move out. Yes, you're going to have some scruffs or some scuffs on the wall, probably some nail holes, you know, it really depends. Was that negotiated, you know, in the beginning in your contract to have the seller fill the nail holes, you know? So again, those are things you want to make sure you have an experienced realtor on, but typically it's in broom swept condition, meaning it is nicely cleaned. They're not required to professionally clean it. Again, something you can put into the contract. Now that you've done your final walkthrough and the home looks great, you sign your final walkthrough paperwork, and now you go to title and you sign all the documents with the title company. And there are tons of documents. Your title company will walk you through everything that you're signing. It's a very exciting, very emotional time. And um, you're almost, almost, almost at that final step of getting the keys to your new home. And the home is now officially yours. We get the keys. We get to move you in. We get to celebrate. You are now officially a homeowner. And it's just, it's so exciting. It's such a great day. I have goosebumps because I just... It's, it's just, it's, it's so wonderful, really, when someone can realize their dream of owning a home and um, that is your, your last step, right? Now, being a homeowner, there are a ton of steps that come after that. I'm just talking about the home buying process, right? So that is kind of all the different steps. There's so much that goes into each of them. Again, I'm Andrea Sheppy, a Phoenix native and full-time realtor out here in Phoenix. I work all of the cities. And if you have questions or you're looking to relocate, buy, sell in the Phoenix area, I would love to help you. Definitely reach out to me. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you liked it, please like and subscribe. I really appreciate it. It helps the channel out. Make sure you comment below. Let me know what you thought, what you want to learn more about. And I would love to give you guys all the info that you need. Oh,